What's up, y'all? Thanks for joining me. Dang, bro. BB-8 just rolled off the... Hey, chill, bro. He just rolled off the table, but I caught him in one hand. Okay, we're checking out the Generation 2. BB-8 is impressed. SIG MPX and MCX. Although I'm only going to review one of them, and then the other one will get its own video. There's a link to both versions of this gun in the description. Just shoot over to Pyramid Air for more information on this gun. So these are the Generation 2. There's going to be some changes that we're going to show you. And what you probably didn't know... Yeah, I know. ...that these are available in CO2 like we're reviewing here. But I'm looking at the website right now. You just click on PCP and for $69 more, it's a PCP. So now you can get the little shorty in the PCP version. Super cool. So I didn't know this when I made my first SIG videos back in the day which are some of my most viewed. But the SIG MPX is based on the SIG MPX. I thought it was based on the AR-15 or something, or a SIG's version of it. But the SIG MPX and MCX are actual guns, and you can grab them off Gun Broker, which brings me to my next point. SIG makes the best guns in the world, and people maybe wonder why they don't make the best air guns in the world. Well, if you want to pay SIG $2,000 for an air gun, I'm sure they would make a nice one for you. But these are not that much, about 10 times less. BB-8, you there? Okay, buddy. And they are not made by SIG to be target shooting guns. They're not made to be hunting or pest control guns. You don't shoot a gun like this at a squirrel. These are intended as training weapons. So if you want to buy one and train and shoot cans and plinking size targets, maybe on the move or whatever, these weigh exactly the same, and actually a teeny bit more, than the firearms versions. And you can go and buy the firearms versions for yourself. So, get one of these first, you get a firearm version later, or vice versa. Great training weapon if you just want to strap it on your back to get used to carrying it around. And also, I guess you would call it your form and stuff, if you want to practice shouldering the weapon, getting your head in the right position, all that stuff. And you can put all the accessories that goes on your regular firearm on this one. So I just want to get that out of the way. This is for training and it is actually one of the funnest air rifles you can get. It's the part you've been waiting for, BB. We're going to go outside and blow some cans up with some open sights. You ready for that? And about the baddest CO2 gun you're ever going to find. It's semi-auto. So here we go. The other cool thing about these MPX and MCX CO2 rifles is that they're not a third-party company making a replica of a firearm. It's actually SIG making a 177 air-powered version of their gun. Just a few of the hardcore stats. Comes in 177 only. The velocity on the CO2 and the PCP versions are going to be exactly the same. The short one's going to give you 450 feet per second, and the longer MCX version is going to give you 550 feet per second. Semi-auto. It has a rifled steel barrel, so this ain't no BB gun. And it has a 30-round magazine that's basically belt-fed. So you, you load the belt, and it's super reliable. One of the new things for the Gen 2 is a flat blade trigger. Improved textured pistol grip. I think that's new, too. It's got adjustable flip-up front and rear sights, so you can use it without a scope. Full-length Picatinny scope rail. M-lock handguard, so you can put um, accessories, even bipods on there. That's awesome. The Gen 2 MCX and MPX as well has an improved ergonomic buttstock. Barrel length on the MCX, which is the longer one, is 17.7 inches with an overall length of 34 inches. And it weighs 7.35 pounds. The shorter version is going to be the MPX. And it actually has an 8 inch barrel with an overall length of 26 inches. Weighs 6.2 pounds. It says medium high on the loudness scale, but we'll find out. And as I said, it's made for plinking and fun. As you can see, this is a really good looking gun. And what you're looking at is all metal. The only thing that's not metal on this gun is the magazine and the polymer grip. Also part of the handguard. Made in Japan as well. There's that new flat bladed trigger. Your mag release button right there is also metal. You got an ambidextrous full metal selector switch. Just two positions, safe and fire. Like I said, this receiver and everything, it's all metal. So you got a metal mag release button. works really good. You just hit that and your mag will pop out. And if you don't hit it, it won't. 
It does have a full metal charging handle and those sights are all metal. The charging handle does not open the little door right there. I think it's just for show. I don't think you need to uh, use it to cock the gun or anything like that. You just load the magazine and start pulling the trigger. It's got nice iron sights and I mean all metal. So you got your choice of big or small peep sight. It's adjustable left and right. And as well you got a all metal front sight and the post you just screw that and it'll go up and down adjustable for elevation and right there's your polymer handguard but there are some metal pieces under it and your barrels all metal so the Picatinny rail goes from polymer to metal so the last half of it where your scope actually goes is metal and that's it now let's uh, put this thing together hunk of metal right there and here's a look at that low profile stock it's actually soft rubber so a little bit of stylus down there you can put your rifle sling through there but this is actually going to snap on and it's going to cover our 88 gram co2 source so in each one of these packs you get two of these and they're going to last a lot of shots we'll find out how many but i'm sure at least 200 and if you get the PCP version for this gun, it's just going to have a PCP tank sticking out the back with a butt pad on the end of it. So you're just going to screw this in. Give you a look at what's going on back here. So that's where you're going to screw your uh, stuff in right there. Metal to metal. And then it's like this right here is just your button that holds your butt stock on. And that's all metal as well. So this little guy right here is going to snap right over that button. Boom, we are all set. Ready to rock and roll. Now I'll show you how to load this magazine. Like I say, this gun is going to take all the old magazines. Basically, you flip open this door, just pull this out. That's your belt right there. And we are going to put it down with the metal side on the hard surface. So metal side down. So these are some 177 caliber premieres, which we will also test. As I said before, with the metal side going down, you get to put your pellet in head first. All right, and then you, when you push them in, they do kind of snap in there pretty good, but that's only part of it. You need to take your little tool that you got, and I'm 100% sure they're somewhere on the gun. I think it's in the pistol grate where you could store this. And you take that little guy right there, and then use that to like push it in. Oh yeah, it snaps in there nicely. And then now those are snapped in, ready to go. As you can see, they're a little bit down in there. So you just load up all 30 rounds. So inside your magazine, you can see there's a little notch right there. Let me zoom in on it. And then one side of your belt has a notch on it. And so that's just gonna slide real smooth like butter right in there so you just feed your belt in there and uh yeah look i just fed it all the way in and it doesn't matter where you stop it's just going to automatically be at the right spot when you snap that shut and you're all set like i said don't worry about where this is right here although you can actually rotate it with your finger like this because the notch sticks out right here as soon as you pull the trigger it's going to cycle to the next one automatically just slam that sucker in there. You're ready to rock and roll. Not coming out until you hit that mag release button. With the small part going forward right there. That's it. Looks like on this side at least we got a uh, red dot for fire. So. There we go. Nice stiff safety. I like that actually. Woo. All right, because this thing's locked and loaded now. Of course, we're going to wear our safety glasses. All right, you guys got a little something, something right under my coat right there, and we're at a very special 15 yards away. Nice. I am going to be hitting these targets with my open sights. So there's that bad boy right here. We got good old peep sight. So I'll probably use a small one. And I'm not going to try to line it up for the perfect shot. It's going to look something like this, though.
This thing's ready to go. It's got a full clip of Crossman Premieres. Crossman Premieres won't be your most accurate pellet out of this gun, but they'll definitely be the cheapest. All right, I'd say we're sighted in enough to hit some cans. We'll shoot these cans, from, check out the penetrating power. These Crossman Premiers weigh 7.9 grains. So they're a little bit lighter than the JSP that we're gonna be shooting. Should be traveling at a consistent 450 feet per second. Here's some shooting I did with the 8.44 grain JSP without even sighting in. And those are gonna be traveling in around 400 feet per second consistently. All right, I took my sight off there and sure enough, it's all metal. From head to toe. I'm gonna go ahead and mount my helix on there because that's what I do. There we go. Uh, let me fold my sight. <laughs> Forgot to fold my sight down first. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna have to take that off because it's gonna interfere with my scope right there. So sometimes you get guns and they don't line up. The mill, whatever these, the Picatinnies, okay. And I would happen to report that the SIG lines up perfectly. Every once in a while I'll have to, uh, because these are not right, I'll have to loosen one of these and, and cheat them to one side. All right, kind of uh, off camera, kind of not. Basically I'm gonna run all these through the core breath, and then uh, I'm gonna see if I'm... I was just explaining here how most of my 177 caliber pellets are too heavy for this gun, but you could probably get away with using the 10.34 grain Hades, as well as 10.34 grain dome-shaped JSB. Both of those would probably shoot all right out of this gun. All right, I got 10 of these bad boys loaded up. And then maybe if you guys are good, we'll do some Ukrainian exploding pellets. So you better like and subscribe. Right meow. All right, now I got 10 of these bad boys loaded up. Got to remember to snap them in with your tool. All right, we're still 17 yards. See where we hit. Ooh, that's pretty close. I was afraid my helix wouldn't sight in there, so. Ooh, it's got some pep to it, too. Four fifty, exactly what they said. Watch this. Well, we're going in the same hole. <laughs> it's just not the hole that I set it in for. That's what I thought. So that's as low as my crosshairs go. Ooh, I'm liking that. All right, looking good. So I'm gonna go back up a teeny bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to come that way a little bit. Back up a little bit. Definitely need to come over some more. Got to do a lot of clicks when you're close up. And that's it, you guys. Okay, when it comes time to see if you're empty, you just go like that and look right in there and you can see, whoop, there we go, it's empty. Let's see what we can do. That holes from the open sight shooting. Like I said, you guys are not all perfect. Like Oot. There is your group. About three inch group. But I'm definitely sighted in.
These once again are the 8.44 grain GSBs, and we'll do a shot string with these at the end of the video. <laughs> Two with one shot, nice. Uh, chronograph didn't really dig it though. Shooting with one hand, baby. Sorry about that. Whoa, these are more than one use. Right, let's get this guy here. Nice. Boy, this is actually pretty fun. Oh, that guy took him out. Ooh, alley. Boy, that's pretty cool. So yeah, this is what I'm, what's called plinking. Okay, that's fun. Well, let's get some cans up here. What's cool is I know that my magazine belt rotates to the left. I just loaded 10 pellets, I lined up. Whoa, baby. That was cool. I lined up my first full pellet bay and I knew it was gonna go to the left and I'm ready to go, 10 shots. Ooh. Stubborn. Look at this brave stunt can. <laughs> he took a bunch of rounds. By the way, I got in trouble for calling BBs rounds on one of the comments, so that guy's banned from my channel. Anyway, I'm gonna save this. Here's a funky fresh trigger pull test. So it has a great trigger pull coming in. Just 13 ounces, so a little bit under a pound. And this is what it looks like. It's raining out, so there's a little bit of water on there, but. If you want to do some precision shooting with this gun, just back it up to about 10 meters away. With a $20 laser sight, I was shooting pellet on pellet. Really a lot of fun. Putting it in the same hole with my laser. If you look up in the top left corner, you can see the CO2 cloud revealing the beam to my laser sight. Something you don't see every day. So this is a full magazine of 8.44 grain JSBs. That's 30 shots and I shot this off a full cylinder that I shot maybe four magazines off of. I was pretty impressed. I thought it held the FPS very consistently. Some of you might have been saying, Nate, why'd you shoot that motorcycle guy? But that guy's a professional stuntman. I had to pay him to be in this video, but he didn't get hurt at all. You all right, bro? Let's ride, brother. All right, guys and gals, that's it for me on this one. We'll be back at you with a longer version of this gun called the MCX, and we'll pick up right where we left off. Once again, I appreciate you tuning in. Till then, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.